right. Today's project is going to involve something that a lot of you probably thought about. And that's replacing, upgrading the crappy quality on this Furion soundbar to provide sound for the TV and from the onboard radio. Went to Costco, came across a soundbar that has built in subwoofers for a really good price. It's Yamaha ATS 1080. So I'm going to take a look at that. And that'll be the project for the day. All right. As on just about every RV built, you have two sources of power. You've got 12 volt DC and you've got the uh, AC current for the house, the shore power. On our trailer, the TV is AC or shore powered. The radio is 12 volt powered. And that's our AC right there. You can probably hear it. The sound bar is fed from through the radio and is also 12 volt. The problem is the new sound bar is AC powered, shore powered, house powered. So what I'm going to do, and something we have to consider, is it probably won't be able to feed it through the radio anymore. There'll be a direct connect to the TV, provide sound off the TV. This, the speakers and the reception on this are so lousy that we really don't listen to it as a radio. We don't use it as a radio. Mostly just a DVD player to feed the image to the TV, which it'll still do. But what we'll do is we'll hook the, the new sound bar to the TV. So, our sound bar is wall mounted. So I've got to get this off. are the connections. That are the connections for power and audio, video in, video out. So that should be compatible. I'll need to take this down. The new one is tabletop or wall mountable. So once I get the old one down, we'll go from there. Alright, let's take these out. They ever caught the stud there. Open the box. Let's see what we got in here. Now this end we got fire cord. In the middle we have some simple RCA cables. And remote control another remote for the RV huh and this looks like velcro or some rubber bumpers not sure figure that out So inside the box we have uh, optical cable. It looks like the instructions. A little bit heavier than the Furion, I'm sure. So it's going to have to be mounted solidly to the wall. Looks like the hangers are here. Yeah. HDMI, two of them. Amplifier, TV, subwoofer. Out if you have a separate powered subwoofer. This is probably the RCA cables. I doubt this Furion TV has an optical. In the instruction manual, didn't show an optical 
output this RCA. So yeah, got two RCA cables. For the deck of the TV and this one for the sound bar. Power cord. That's an optical cable. I'll look and see if there's an optical jack on the back of the TV. I doubt it. Warranty registration. Owner's manual. Quick start guide. All right. It'll take a few minutes to get uh, familiar with this stuff. All right. What I've done is the sound bar mounts to the wall like in a house, this is meant for residential use, and just hangs, and there's no vibration, so it can hang on two well-placed screw heads, and that's fine, but in the trailer, obviously we got a vibration issue, so what I've done is I've gotten lucky. The two mounting screws have hit studs. Uh, don't expect that to happen all the time, but I've set this, and the template comes with it, so it, it, you get to set up perfectly where you want the mounting screws. What I've done is I've lowered this enough so the the um, sound bar will rest on this, and this will help hold some of that weight. I'll set these so they click into place tightly, and then I'm going to put a Velcro strap in the wall here to go around the sound bar help hold it in place. I think that's going to work, so let me do that now. All right. Remember earlier I showed you some rubber spacers that came with it? Well, they go back here, and they're, they're attached to the sound bar back here and here. What I've done is I've set the screws just deep enough to allow me to push this on, compress that styrofoam or that neoprene space are enough to catch the head of the screw and then the expanding neoprene when I let go has put some good tension on this so this is solid as you can see it's resting on the top of this cabinet so this is holding its own weight I'm still going to put a velcro strap on here because I'm, I'm just not comfortable with it 100% all right these neoprene spacers come in the packet come in the box and there's two of them, one there and one there. You put them where you want them, but this is where they kind of show in the diagram. But this does allow for there to be space between a wall and a sound bar so it can breathe. It's got some vent back here, so apparently it generates some heat. And the screw head, when it goes in here, if I can push this hard against the wall, I can compress that enough to get the screw heads in and then when I release it, this will create tension against the screw heads and that helps hold it in. That coupled with the Velcro strap that I've got now mounted to the wall should keep this up on the wall without falling off during travel. Also, the weight of the sound bar, which is about twice as heavy as the Furion one, is supported by this ledge. We'll, we'll see how this works. All right, what I've done, these are the wire, speaker wires that come from the IRV house radio here that went to the Furion sound bar. I don't want to cut these. There may be a, a reason the next owner might want to restore this to its original condition for whatever reason. So I usually keep parts I pull off the trailer, set aside, and I'll pass them on with the new owners in the future. So what I did is I put heat shrink over the connections so there's no shorting or any issues there, and I'll just simply zip tie this up behind the TV. All right, here's the sound bar in place. Here's the, I got the Velcro strap as uh, a backup to hold this on. It's mounted. This is about as solid as you can get it. Probably, I think it's more solid than the Furion because the Furion did not catch any wood back here. So that should work. <laughs> Something that I, I needed to do is we have a Roku player and it sat here on the ledge and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it but this pocket back here created by the plugs for the cords is just the right size to drop this in. So that'll be my Roku holder now. But another project completed. 
It does sound a thousand percent better than the Furion one that came with the trailer. A lot richer, a lot more bass. It's pretty awesome. This is George here on Our Coupled Adventure. Another DIY project for the trailer is done. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, now sorry about that. Um, subscribe, share it with your friends. Leave some comments below about upgrades you've done to the audio in your RV to help others and give us ideas for future upgrades. At some point, I probably will upgrade the radio. It's a horrible radio. And at that point, I'll have to separate the audio from the video. Right now, everything kind of runs through that box there. So, thanks for watching. Take care.